afternoon everybody now today afternoon we will start the topic of advanced control system it's actually module 5 of that particular subject advanced control system my lecture outlines consists of introduction types and characteristics the classification and the state space model and the analysis of the nonlinear control system in which i describe a little bit about the function of it and all of you know about the nonlinear systems the nonlinear systems is nothing but the input and output are not in proportional with each other that means the input increases the output may not increases in a linear manner there can be a nonlinear character is there the proportionality is not linear it's a very known fact that many relationships about quantities are quite linear also they are often approximated by linear equations mainly for mathematical simplicity for mathematical simplicity only we approximate uh, the system by using the linear equations and this simplifications may be satisfactory at the moment the resulting solutions are in agreement with the experimental results if the resulting solutions and the experimental results are matched with each other then we say that the simplification is satisfactory but if they are not matched with each other we will not say the mathematical simplification is okay so that is an introduction and next uh we move to the definition of nonlinear system nonlinear system is a type of system where the output from the system does not vary directly with respect to the inputs to the system so input and output are not directly direct relation direct linear linear relation and then the question arises why we study the nonlinear systems this is because all of the physical systems in the world are nonlinear in nature so uh, it is difficult to uh, manipulate or it is difficult to uh, configure the system in the nature by linear mathematics so we use the nonlinear non mathematics or nonlinear non modeling of the system and how we can model the nonlinear system we can model the nonlinear systems using nonlinear mathematical model and this nonlinear mathematical model will consist of nonlinear differential equations so it is a fact that the, the nonlinear mathematical models or mathematical tools are more available more as compared to the linear mathematical models but each tool is universally applicable to all the systems in a fruitful, fruitful fruitful manner for example some systems may be applicable to some nonlinear systems and the others may be applicable to some other systems so every single tool is universally applicable to all systems so according to different conditions or different contexts we use different types of uh, nonlinear mathematical equations or tools we know that in the linear domain mainly we use the matrix algebra but in the nonlinear domain we use the functional analysis and differential geometry so these are the two major mathematical tools for analyzing the nonlinear systems so here uh, we can see a spring model and two colors are shown one is red and the other one is blue this blue color represents a linear spring model sorry uh, red color represents a linear spring model here the force is proportional uh, to the uh, displacement or distance moved by the spring so when the force increases the spring movement also increases in a linear manner there is a straight line we can see but the second thing here the blue line here is a nonlinear spring model where the equation when you see that that equation is actually a nonlinear 
character because uh, there is a cube cube of x that actually shows the uh, nonlinear character of the system nonlinear system so yeah yeah this is actually here we can see that here actually it is shifting from the uh, linear region or linear characteristics is shifting and it is uh, deviating to this way and this mainly due to this i uh, the presence of this x cube x cube component is here that's why it is uh, have this type of uh, characteristics happening here next uh, we we go to the types of nonlinear systems and uh, we know that there are many two types of nonlinear systems one is static and the other one is dynamic and what is the difference between static and dynamic system the static systems involves a differential equation sorry it doesn't involve a differential equation whereas the dynamic uh, nonlinearity can be represented by using a nonlinear differential equation so the differential equation uh, will determine whether the system is static or dynamic the static the static uh, there is no linear differential equation the static case whereas in dynamic case it is uh, just the reverse case that a nonlinear differential equation is must or it is uh, important for the modeling of a dynamic system and when we go to the characteristics of a nonlinear system we can see the first and the most important one is the principle of superposition is not obeyed by a nonlinear system the principle of superposition is uh, very much known to you, the audience, uh, mostly the students uh, in, in your previous semesters. Principle of superposition involves linearity as well as homogeneity. For example, the input is x and uh, the input produces an output y. If the input is uh, applied with a gain k or if the input is k x, then the output is also ky. So the, the multiplication by k is applicable to both input and output. So that means it is linear. And homogeneity represents, say, suppose if x1 and x2 are two inputs, and if x1 produces an output y, y1, and x2 produces an output y2, then the sum of x1 and x2 will produce or must produce an output y1 and y1 plus y2. So x1 plus x2 will give y1 plus y2. That principle is not applicable in nonlinear system. And there are other another important thing is that there are isolated multiple of isolated equilibrium points in a nonlinear system. Then equilibrium point means uh, the point where the derivative becomes zero. The change in the variable, change in the value of the variable will be zero in the nearby region. Then that point, uh, 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 change in the derivative is zero at a particular point. That is the point, equilibrium point. And the isolated equilibrium point means that in the nearby point around the equilibrium point, uh, there are no such equilibrium points there. It's only isolated. Such equilibrium points are isolated equilibrium points and here there are number of isolated equilibrium points are possible in a nonlinear system and another characteristic is it has a bifurcation and chaos chaos bifurcation is an important thing where the characteristic of a system will diverge or change into different branches and then again the characteristic Six will again change into different branches. So it's a bifurcated way. That, uh, that's an important thing, but we will not discuss in detail. And Chavos is actually the irregularity of a system. That these both characteristics are available in the nonlinear system. And the finite, finite escape type. Uh, that means that the solutions of nonlinear systems is not available in all the time. Because the solutions of a nonlinear system will be available only for a particular time or particular range. And after that, after that, the solution will vanish. And then again, another solution. That means it will escape within a finite time. So it's called the finite escape time. And then 
then some harmonic harmonic or almost period uh, possible here because when we give an input a sinusoidal input to the neural linear system we can say there are a lot of harmonics are present uh, some harmonics are present and a periodic type of oscillations will be present in output so that is actually a characteristic and if the neural linearity is said to be multi variable then we we say that or we infer from that the functions of uh, more than one variable is present here functions of more than one variable that non linearity is maybe due to the function of more than one variable such type of non linear non linearity is called a uh, multi variable uh, non linearity okay i think this is clear to you and then uh, we move to another slide then again the characteristics will continue here uh, some more characteristics are here frequency amplitude dependency the non linear system will depend on the amplitude of the system of the input as well as the frequency if the amplitude increases it is highly sensitive to the input amplitude if the amplitude increases the, the, the system's character will be not predictable it may change to an abrupt change, a sudden change that will be possible. And that each one will be discussed later in the coming slides. And multi value response means uh, the system will, non -linear, non linear system will have different values at a particular time. That is possible. But in a linear system, it will not be possible because for a particular time, there will be only one value. Here, it is multiple values. And jump resonance, another important thing, jump of response amplitude with frequency. That means as the frequency changes, the response of the system will be changed drastically. So here uh, jump re resonance is an important characteristic. And the limit cycle. Limit cycle means the response oscillations with fixed amplitude and, and frequency. The response is actually an oscillation and that oscillation is having a fixed amplitude and frequency at a particular frequency so it's just like a periodic oscillation not like a sinusoidal pattern it's a, just a cross type of curves and the limit cycle is known as limit cycle this uh, all these things will be detailed in the coming slides and frequency arrangement means the limit cycle frequency is enrained by a forcing frequency. Uh, we apply a forcing frequency, a signal with a particular frequency, and that frequency will enrain or, or that will contain the uh, limit cycle frequency. That will uh, contain, that will uh, separate and segregate it. And even the frequency are in uh, forcing frequency. Upon frequency we can enter the uh, frequent, frequency range by right? a forcing frequency that is possible in the old linear system. And asynchronous which means the limit cycles have a particular oscillation and a particular frequency. And that oscillation can be conched, can be stopped by applying a particular frequency or forcing at another frequency that we can conch the system or constant limit cycle oscillations that is called asynchronous conch. Then when we go into detail the frequency amplitude dependency, we can see that a spring system, a mechanical system uh, which consists of a spring and mass and a damper. Uh, here the differential equation of the system is mx double dot plus bx dot plus kx plus k dash x cube equals zero. Here x is the distance moved by this spring, distance moved, moved by this spring, and x dot is the velocity of that particular uh, moment. F double dot is the acceleration, m is the uh, mass here. So this is the equation, and k is the spring constant. K dash is actually uh, which mostly connected with a nonlinear characteristic. So Kx plus K dash X cube is a nonlinear spring force. This together is a nonlinear spring force. 
And here we can see that the parameters m, that is mass m, b, that is damping, and k, the spring constant, these are positive constants. While this k dash can be positive or negative. If k dash is positive, then we say that the spring is a hard spring, and if k dash is negative, it's called a soft spring. So here, uh, we can uh, move to the next slide, then it will be clear. In the next slide, slide a solution is shown here. The solution of uh, this system is here. It's a damped oscillation. And uh, there are three conditions. Uh, if k dash is positive and k dash is zero and k dash is negative. If k dash is positive, what we can say is that the, os the oscillations that will damp but the free frequency will reduce. As k, increase, k dash increases, the frequency will reduce as the time progresses. Whereas the second figure we can see the frequency remains unchanged or frequency zero. Sorry, uh, frequency remains unchanged for k dash equals zero. But here also damping will occur. And in the third figure we can see uh, the k dash is negative. Here the damping happens but the frequency uh, increases as the time progresses. So depending on k dash or depending on the nonlinear characteristics of the system, the frequency will change as well as the amplitude is changing. So both are changing. So that means the frequency and amplitude are dependent on the input signal. Next. Okay. Uh, ne next figure, figure is also dependent on that. Here k dash is uh, zero here. Uh, the, that means at that time the frequency is constant and if k dash is greater than zero the frequency is increasing and if the k dash is less than zero, less than zero that means here also be dependent. So this is another graph here. And then our next characteristic is the multi-value response that I have told earlier. The multi-value response means for a particular frequency, you can see for a particular frequency, say here, here uh, the values are multi-value because 2 and 3 are the two points at a particular frequency. 2 is a value and 3 is another value for a same frequency. That means it's multi-value. And the gem response means the characteristics will change abruptly. For example, the characteristic is moving like this, graph is moving like this. At this particular time, uh, uh, the, the response is changing. This is in the forward direction, this is in the backward direction. That is, the characteristic is completely changing or it's phase reversing, complete phase reversal happens. So this is called a gem response. So uh, this is another characteristic and then ah, here I already said the subharmonic and superharmonic oscillation. For a spring mass damper system, it exhibits a periodic oscillation and here we apply an input, uh, giving an input of fixed amplitude and frequency, there produces an output uh, of another frequency and the output frequency can be, may not be the same as the input frequency. It can be a multiple of the input frequency or a sub-multiple of input frequency. So that depends. Anyway, uh, there is, the output is having a complex signal which consists of so many frequencies and that frequency is actually the Fourier components. That mathematics is called the Fourier mathematics. So Fourier uh, mathematics, Fourier analysis is normally used to analyze what are the components inside the output of a nonlinear system when subjected to a sinusoidal input. So then, okay, then I have said the limit cycle. Limit cycle is nothing but it's a self-sustained oscillation, self-excited oscillations. We're giving a, a particular frequency input then the output oscillates. That output oscillations is 
self excitation and because it's not a forced system there is no uh, forced input is here the output limit cycle is having a uh, fixed frequency and also just a fixed amplitude and that will continue forever but not like this it will uh, move in a periodic manner just like an which and here depending on the value of uh, x the damping will be negative also just positive that depends on the nonlinear character characteristic then another important thing is our frequency punching frequency punching uh, uh, sorry frequency entrainment frequency entrainment i have already uh, here the forcing frequency is here that is w this is a periodic uh, force of frequency omega that is applied to a system and let omega 0 be the limit cycle frequency omega 0 be the limit cycle frequency and what happens when these two join together what happens is that at some particular point here the uh, sorry at some particular points we can see say here here uh, the max ma the magnitude is maximum because these two maximum magnitudes magnitudes will superimpose that will produce a high magnitude and at this particular points we can see uh, having lower response because the positive of this frequency will act with the negative or the topmost part is acting with the lowermost part of this uh, signal that will produce a low amplitude so such type of characteristics is happen here we can see these uh, these frequencies are entrained by using this force frequency here only the uh, high amplitude is available the low amplitude is uh, actually completely damped out or entrained by using the system so this is a characteristic and then uh, this also the frequency entrainment we can see here delta omega that part is the uh, low the system signal having the lowest magnitude that part is actually entrained that is the frequency entrainment and that is also similar to the frequency entrainment here in the nonlinear system it exhibits a limit cycle of a particular frequency and it is possible to quench these limit cycle oscillations by forcing the system at another frequency omega 1. So then the quenching, the limit cycle quenching is possible. Uh, absence of limit cycle may be possible. That, that is called a phenomenon of quenching. And uh, actually, we, uh, we move to the uh, next section. But I think that uh, the time, 20 minutes time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, for, from the first 20 uh, minutes lecture, I have received few questions. Uh, so the first question is, what is, uh, what is actually beat frequency? How it is a factor of frequency entrainment? Ah, uh, okay, okay. Good question. The beat frequency is actually uh, the the superimposing of these uh, two inputs here w, w or omega omega is the uh, input forcing frequency and omega zero is the uh, limit state frequency the superimposing of these two systems will produce uh, a set of high uh, high amplitude inputs and a low amplitude section and uh, this High amplitude section that means which produces a beat there. For, uh, for, for that, I uh, discuss in detail about the example of a tuning fork. And here, tuning fork is having uh, 256 and 257 sec per second. Both are the frequencies of a tuning fork. And uh, we, we can see that when we uh, combine these two frequencies, this tuning. Of frequencies we when we combine together what we see we see a compression of one wave and the refraction of the other wave 
the compression of one frequency and the refraction of the other frequency. And this joining, and this joining is actually called the beat frequency. Okay, sir, that was clear. Another question is, uh, what is forced system? For forced system, okay. Forced system means uh, when we give an input to a system, when we give an input to a system, uh, that system is said to be a forced system. It's a forced system because if uh, there are so many types of systems, systems in which there are uh, absence of input, such types of systems are called autonomous systems. In autonomous systems, there is uh, no input is available. But if you apply input to a system, it's called a forced system. Okay, sir. Another question is, what do you mean by self-excited self oscillation? Yeah. Self-excited oscillations means, uh, coming to that particular slide. Uh, self-excited oscillation. Uh, here we actually are, we are, this is actually an autonomous system in which the, uh, we will not give a input to the system. Uh, it's called and it's not, a, not a forced system. And the oscillations will, uh, will produce. So for example, in an oscillator, in an electronic oscillator, we can see that here we will not apply any input or signals to the system, but the oscillations will be produced. Such type of oscillations are called self excited oscillations or limit cycle. The electronic amplifier is the best example of a, uh, a limit cycle characteristics. Okay, sir, that was clear. We can continue with the next 20 minutes lecture, sir. Okay, okay, thank you. Then I will continue the next section. Till now, we have discussed uh, the introduction part and the type and characteristics. Then we move to the classification part. Here we actually classify the system into two. One is incidental and the other one is intentional. Incidental means the nonlinearities are actually inherently present in that system. Maybe we will not give from outside. For example, saturation, friction, dead zone, backlash, and hysteresis. These are all examples of incidental, which is inherently present in a system. But if we give us an input uh, as a characteristic to the system in order to modify the system characteristic, such type of nonlinearities are called intentional nonlinearities. For example, relay. We give the relay characteristics, relay nonlinearity to a system, then the system's characteristics will be modified. That is called intentional. So this type of uh, major classification is like this. And we discuss one by one in detail. And saturation to nonlinearity this is a very uh, practical as well as it's very popular nonlinearity. For example, in a DC motor, the magnetizing gear of a DC motor, we can see that when we apply current to the system, uh, to the motor, or the supply supply to the system, to the motor, what happens? The uh, magnetizing flux will increase. And the flux will not increase in a linear manner to the whole range of inputs. It will be available only, only for a particular input in a linear manner, and then it will become a constant. It is called it is saturated. It means it is saturated. And here, this figure actually is clear from this figure. You can see <coughs> this is a linear region, a linear region. Uh, here, the input and the output are in proportion, having proportionality. And after this particular point, what happens? It is approximated or uh, Yes, uh, the, the characteristics is remains in a uh, constant value. So that is called a saturation. It just happens in the positive side as well as in the negative side. So actually the total system characteristics can be divided into three. One is here, a, a particular line of slope, and another line of different slope, and again another line of different slope. So these three sloped uh, lines will constitute the total configuration. And in the case of an electronic amplifier, it is also the same characteristics we can see. The amplifier output gain will not increase in a, in a linear manner after a particular input. Then after that particular input, 
for that critical point, what happens? The amplifying gain in computer constant. Here, the signal when we uh, see signals, we can see this uh, blue line is actually uh, blue line is actually a saturated char uh, characteristics of an actuator because uh, the os the uh, oscillations will not increase in a in a high manner. Here, this is a red color that is represents a non sorry a non saturated actuator because here just just not at all uh, cutting, uh, just increases in a very, very uh, dangerous manner. So, here we can see the saturated system oscillate, but which will not diverge. These blue lines will not diverge as compared to the red line. But the red line is diverging and it is, it is moving in a dangerous manner. So, that is called the saturation. Uh, when you study the magnetic properties of a system, we will be normally look into or normally come across the saturation property. So this is one of the most important property. Uh, then friction nonlinearity. Friction nonlinearity means friction is actually the opposing force. The friction will happen when the body is at rest or when the body is in motion. If the body is at rest, that friction or the opposing force is called static friction. And when the body is in motion, the friction at that time is called a dynamic friction. And the maximum static friction is called a limiting friction. Above the limiting friction, the body will uh, start moving. And the dynamic uh, friction is again of two types, sliding as well as rolling. When a body slides over another, uh, we can see it's a, uh, there is a sliding friction in between them. And when a body rolls over other, then rolling friction will come. So here uh, in the figure we can see uh, here as the velocity increases, uh, just the beginning or when the body is at rest, we have a particular force of force of friction here. And when the body starts moving, what happens? The friction force there but it remains a constant value here and here we can see uh, the cooler friction the cooler friction is the uh, friction due to the rubbing contacts of of two surfaces for example in electric motor we can see that there are brushes as well as commutators and the brushes and commutator when in rubbing contact with each other there is a, a drag occurs that drag is called the cooler friction and after the velocity starts increasing or the body moves, what happens? The friction also increasing. So here, this is increasing in the opposite direction. So this is called uh, uh, friction. Here, this friction is increasing, but here friction is constant. In any way, the friction is a non-linearity. This is not at all possible in a linear system. Then dead zone non-linearity. Dead zone non-linearity means the when we, when the input crosses a particular point or limit, then only the output will be produced. We we are giving input to a system. As the input increases, there is no change in the output for up to a particular time or a, or, a, or a, up to a particular input. Here we can see from zero to a, there is no change in output. No output will happen. But only after input crosses this particular point a. Then what happens? The output is increased. So this is in the forward direction as well as in the reverse direction. So from minus a to a, there is a dead zone. The condition in which the output becomes zero. It's a dead zone. It is normally we can see in a DC servo motor or in different types of actuators, etc. Okay, then backlash nonlinear. This backlash nonlinearity is normally happen or we can see in a gear system, mechanical gear system. In mechanical gear systems, we can see that there are two types of trains. One is uh, gear train, one is gear train and the other is gear train. Gear drive train and the gear train. Uh, and gear train, one is gear, 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 one is
example, the Vandana backlash moment is gap, is called the backlash. ट्रांसमिशन Such as in the gear drives, and the distance between the teeth of the drive gear and the drive one gear, drive gear and drive one gear, that distance is called the backlash. It's actually different from the magnetic distance. Here, uh, actually, this is the a particular graph of that. This, this is just like a cross curve. It is different from the uh, magnetic distance. And then we move to the relay nonlinearity. Another important nonlinearity. Relay nonlinearity means that it's an on-off condition. It's having two states. When we going to see an ideal characteristics of a bidirectional relay, we can see the bidirectional relay is having two states. One is on state and the other one is off state. If this is on state, then it is called off state. So two states are here, on and off state. This is an ideal case. In actual case, it will not be. Here and when the, this relay characteristic is combined with a hysteresis characteristic, hysteresis characteristics we know that uh, we are giving some flex or input as a flex to a system. When we move back the magnetizing force from that system, uh, there remains a residual flex density in the in the magnetic material. It is called the uh, residual flex density. And such type of characteristic is called the hysteresis. So, uh, uh, when we magnetize the system, there remains some magnetic flux there, and when we move back, it will not remove it. There remains a uh, a small sort of magnetic flux there. That is called the hysteresis. And this hysteresis, when combined with the, this relay, uh, it is like this. Because uh, here the relay characteristics we can see here, but the uh, hysteresis characteristics also we can see. And this figure represents when we combine the uh, relay as well as the dead zone characteristics. A relay field winding, which is having a dead zone characteristics, what happens? Uh, this dead zone will we can see, and again the relay characteristics will come. This is a combined effort. In uh, many systems, we can see the combined efforts of different nonlinear characters. Uh, a very tool or a very device is not restricted to one nonlinear. Uh, it's having multiple different varieties of nonlinearities are possible here. Okay, then uh, relays nonlinearity and actually uh, this is actually uh, one the characteristics part of nonlinear systems and. Uh, मोडलिया <laughs> The nonlinear system model uh, here we use a state equation here. This is state equation x dot is equal to f of t x u. That means it is a function of time, stage, and input. Time, stage, and input. And here output y is another function of h, another function of time, stage, and input. In this state equation as well as in the output equation, both are functions of time, stage, and input, but These are Poisson functions, where x is nothing but uh, a column matrix of different state variables, say x1, x2, etc., up to xn, having dimension n, and u is the input here or control effort, and that input is also having different values u1, u2, etc., up to
up to um e1 u2 etc up to um we can say we here having m number of input variables and the function f of t x u is a functional function of different uh, single functions like f1 f2 etc up to f so this is actually a statement because in uh, why we write in this way because rather nammal ipo linear system la anengil ax plus bu na parayunnu endu cha x inde mathram bandhapetta oru oru matrix undu u nu bandhapetta vera oru matrix undu ivada namakku x inde oru prathega matrix nu separate cheyanam adu pole u nu oru prathega matrix nu separate cheyanam adanalu cha ni x u nu thammile dependent aanu pala x kalu u ne direct aayittu depend cheyidikkunu u adu pole x ne depend cheyidikkunu adu kondu എക്സും യുവും കൂടെ ഒരു ഒറ്റ ഒരു ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ആയിട്ട് മാത്രമേ നമുക്ക് റെപ്രസെന്റ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റൂ ഞാൻ നേരത്തെ പറഞ്ഞു അൺഫോസ്ഡ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഇക്വേഷൻ ആണെങ്കിൽ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ടി ആൻഡ് എക്സ് ഉള്ളി ഇനി സപ്പോസ് ഇഫ് ദർ ഇസ് എ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഫീഡ്ബാക്ക് യു വിച്ച് ദ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ടി ആൻഡ് എക്സ് ടൈമിന്റെ സ്റ്റേറ്റിന്റെ ഒരു ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ആയിട്ട് നമ്മൾ യുവിനെ എടുക്കുകയാണെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ഈ ക്വസ്റ്റനിൽ സബ്സ്റ്റ്യൂട്ട് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ എന്ത് പറ്റും ഈ ക്വസ്റ്റനിൽ സബ്സ്റ്റ്യൂട്ട് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ടി എക്സ് യുവിന് പകരം സോറി ഈ ക്വസ്റ്റൻ അല്ല ഈ ഫസ്റ്റ് ആദ്യം കാണുന്ന ക്വസ്റ്റൻ ഈ ക്വസ്റ്റനിൽ ടൈം ടൈമും സ്റ്റേറ്റും പറഞ്ഞു ടീം എക്സും പറഞ്ഞു പിന്നെ യുവിന് പകരം ഗാമ ടി എക്സും കൂടെ സബ്സ്റ്റ്യൂട്ട് ചെയ്തു അതായത് ഈ സ്റ്റാൻഡർഡ് ഫംഗ്ഷൻ എഫ് ടിൽ ദ ടി കോമ എക്സ് ഇനി സപ്പോസ് ദ സിസ്റ്റം ഈസ് ഓണോമസ് ദ മീൻസ് ദർ ഇസ് നോ ഇൻപുട്ട് ഇറ്റ്സ് എൻ അൺഫോസ്ഡ് സിസ്റ്റം ഓർ ദ ടൈം ഇൻ വേരിയൻ്റ് ബിക്കോസ് ദർ ഇസ് നോ എഫക്ട് ഓഫ് ടൈം ഓൺ ദ സിസ്റ്റം സച്ച് type of systems is having an equation of x dot is equal to a of x only thus the function or the x dot change in x depends on a only whatever uh, happens in the input there will not be any effect here uh, that type of systems are called autonomous systems and the different types of equations are, are represented here is for your reference and then we for example we move to a pendulum for example and in the pendulum is actually a practical example when we study this the characteristics or the nature of this pendulum we can identify what are the non linear this person here how the non linear is uh, uh, inherent in this system how it is represented we can uh, discuss in detail here here we are saying in a pendulum uh there, there is a bow which is uh, hanging from here with a rope of length l and theta is the angle between this uh, rope and the vertical direction and m is the mass g is the acceleration due to the gravity then uh, mg is the force the uh, acceleration force the gravity force acting here and here uh, there is a frictional force is assumed which is proportional to the speed of the mass and uh, using the newton's second of motion in this tangential direction uh, we say this tangential direction we assume then we can see a ml theta double dot that is the uh, tangential force is proportional to mg sin theta mg sin theta means here uh, this is mg and uh, if this fo force is moving in this direction with an angle theta which is called mg cos theta and if the part of this mg uh, in this the, the 90 degree uh, in this direction that is 90 degree this is mg sin theta and this mg sin theta is minus mg sin theta means this is the opposite to this forward direction in this direction so This is ml theta double dot is in this direction and mg sin theta is in this direction and kl theta dot k is the spring constant or the frictional constant k is the frictional constant and l length theta dot is the uh, angular or speed so this is actually the model equation and uh, when we discuss about the state model the theta is taken as a and theta is taken as a, as a first state variable x1 which has the angle we take the first state variable and the uh, dot theta that means the angular speed is taken as another state variable x2 here x2 x2 oh, here we can see 
uh, x2 is another state variable that is the uh, derivative of x1. So x2 and x1 are the two state variables and the x2 dot that is theta double dot x2 dot is theta double dot is equal to this equation. We derive this equation from the previous equation. And we say x equals x star is an equilibrium point of this particular system. That means x of t0 equals to x star. That is at the beginning time t0 the state remains such x star. State remains such x star. As the time increases from t0 or t0 uh, and higher time or as the time increases what happens? The state of the system will not change. Here also x star. That means the state of the system will not change. There will not be any change in the the state of the system. Such type of states are called equilibrium points. So they are called equilibrium points. And in the autonomous system, that is systems in which U is absent, there the equilibrium points are the real roots of this equation, f of x equals zero. When we take the real roots of this equation, we can see the equilibrium points from this type of equations. And here the equilibrium point is a point where the state of the system will remain at a particular value forever for the whole future time it will be constant that is called equilibrium point so okay then okay yeah in this particular case in this pendulum case the equilibrium points we can find out by taking the each uh, equation to zero say x1 dot equals zero and x2 dot equals zero and x1 dot equals zero means x2 is zero and x2 dot equals 0, this equation is 0. This equation 0 means x2 is 0 already, this time is, is cancelled here, and uh, this time is equated to 0. Then sin x1 0 means, sin x1 0 means, what is this meaning? Sin x1 0 implies that uh, the value of x1 can be 0 or pi or minus pi or 2 pi or minus 2 pi, etc. So, sinusoidal values uh, will have value of 0 at pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, etc. So, so, there are different number of equilibrium points, uh, n pi. So, in general, we say n pi and 0 for the origin is another equilibrium point. So, these are the equilibrium points of a, a symbol or pendulum. And here we can see that there are number of equilibrium points, multiple equilibrium points, and they are isolated because in the nearby region there are no other equilibrium points. So, here an example of isolated uh, multiple equilibrium points. The continuum of equilibrium points. And we can uh, study the of a nonlinear system is actually based on the study behavior of the system around its equilibrium points. So that is about the uh, nonlinear system of a simple pendulum. Then uh, another topic, control design techniques topics. So I have okay, a few okay. questions. Uh, so one question is, what is soft and hard spring? The hardness of the spring, only it means. I'm, I'm uh, not much aware of that thing. Uh, I think that uh, if the characteristics are strong, uh, or the spring force is strong, it's called hard, hard spring. And if it's uh, smooth or soft, it's called soft spring. Can I say is that the K dash, uh, these characteristics, characteristics will depend on the value of K dash. If it is positive, then it's hard spring. Because the, here is an example, okay, uh, here is an example of a spring and, sorry, uh, the mathematical equation of governing the spring characteristics is shown here. That is here. Ah, this is the characteristics. That, uh, this k dash is actually depends on the nonlinear characteristics, and the value of k dash will depend on the, the amplitude, the stiffness of the spring. When the value of k dash changes, the stiffness of the spring also changes. It is hard in some time and hard, soft in another time. That is the difference. Okay, sir, that was clear. Sir, could you please summarize today's session? From beginning, can, could you please summarize the session within few minutes? Okay, okay, sure, sir. 
actually we have not go in detail to the knowledge layer systems we have just mentioned an introduction about a knowledge layer system and then its types characteristics and other properties and these uh, characteristics characteristics are very important and we may have different different types of sessions for each characteristic but due to the time limiting time constraint we limited with only one slide and the major characteristics are uh, major characteristics of a system of a knowledge layer system is saturation friction density so saturation hysteresis these are these are the incidental knowledge layer is and intentional is the relay characteristic and uh, other some important uh, other characteristics Characteristics are also I mentioned here. For example, uh, the system will not obey the superposition principle, and there are isolated equilibrium points are here. The finite time characteristics and harmonic analysis, and then limit cycle, jump response, frequency arrangement, asynchronous coaching. These are all different types of characteristics. And this is actually just the beginning of this vast topic. And when one wants to study more about this, is actually uh, some help may uh, will some in, in, in some way it will help to you because you are the students you are studying uh, in the sixth class the beginning of this knowledge year and when we go to the higher uh, topics or higher research level uh, we will come into more exposure with these topics and anyway I congratulate all the students and the audiences present on online throughout the world to watch and hear this presentation in a very patient manner and also i congratulate uh, my sincere thanks to the coordinators especially the asap coordinators uh, for this video